welcome to WLOOCA TV's summer edition of Waterloo Gardens. Today we are getting the tour of Annette Nomad's summer garden. We're starting at the front of the house with this incredible centerpiece of mostly native vegetation with some extras. And Annette is going to give us a tour of what we're looking at here. Starting with this gorgeous native butterfly bush. This is a plant which is very important for butterflies and other pollinators and easy to take care of. bank is a little challenging for me, as you would think, yeah. runoff is hot, so I've been experimenting, the ajuga seems to, mm -hmm. it's not even that aggressive, and that's a really aggressive plant, so, and the pulmonarias, they seed, actually in the spring those plants are huge, mm -hmm. that's just the refresh. So then they, they got huge, and then they died back, and this is their little second flush. Yes. And how about if you share a little bit about that with us? If some plants do that, they, they're vigorous in the spring. But sometimes you can get a second bloom later, right? Well, I won't get a second bloom, but I'll get some nice foliage. There won't be holes, per se. And, uh, and sometimes they don't die back as quickly, but it was such a hot, dry spring. They just kind of, they just couldn't take it. Sure. So they didn't last as long. Yeah, a lot of the plants, once they bloom, I can't really think of a lot of plants that really bloom much again. It's more about the foliage and cutting it back. And even the ladies' mantle, sometimes I cut that to the ground and it starts to really wane. And by fall, it's fresh leaves. Oh, wow. And pretty. So. Yeah, the blood root when it when I cut that back, it's gone for the year. It's just gone, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of surprised I still have. Yeah, especially in this drought. I know. This is longer lasting that's than I remember yeah. seeing blood root. Usually, it's all died back by now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had it. it. I used to have a big drift as we walked down the hill, and, and it, it is not looking so hot. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's <laughs> I think so. I think so. And you know, they they have little tubers underground. I mean, mm -hmm. they're they're strong plants. Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And a little bit of dale in here. Yes. It's a 
very polite day <laughs> It's very contained. It's a tough spot. <laughs> Surprised it wants to bloom at all. That's something I like to do. If I have a, a really aggressive plant, I put it in a mm -hmm. hard spot. <laughs> yeah, it's a good technique, really. Yeah. So. And we're looking at. It's a tree peony. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was transplanting some things, mm -hmm. had to move it, didn't know where to put it. And I thought, well, I'd like it up front. It's pink, light pink. Oh, yeah. And I had three blooms on it this year, mm -hmm. so it it's okay there. I didn't know if it would. It was an experiment. Sure. Experimenting how one learns, I thought that's what I believe anyway. Yep. I'm always, it looks great. Always something to learn. Yeah. How long has it been there? How long has it been there? I would say at least three years. Okay. It yep. looks great for three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's doing okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how about if we continue on down to admire your Virginia creeper <laughs> and your raised beds? Sure. South side. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is Solomon's seal, which is a woodland plant and a native. It looks like peony back here. Sedum. Bloodroot doing what we expect bloodroot to be doing at this time of year. And that's pretty much what we've got going on right now. The outstanding feature of this area, to me at least, is again this monster. Virginia Creeper, <laughs> which, which you bought with the house. <laughs> we certainly did, and we like, and we even framed it with the stone wall. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I like the the rocks and the scenery there. Few few pros and cons. Super aggressive. Yeah. Have to rip it off the roof every year. Um, but it's creating a really nice privacy wall, oh, and it yeah. turns burgundy in the fall. Oh, yeah. The birds love it. That's pro and con. Yeah. <laughs> if you had gutters, it would probably be con as well. Cause oh, it, it would. It would be tearing down the gutters and yeah, blocking yeah, yeah. them. Well, and a lot of people, they, won't, they don't want a vine like this on their house. It can cause damage, but it was there. I think at this point, it's going to cause more damage to pull it off. Yeah. The trunks on it are massive so and how could it damage the brick i don't know I mean, I will it pull out it, the mortar would it oh okay. it can't the, the whole fast are pretty intense mm -hmm. um, but the new growth isn't as if i get up i'll get up there in the next month or so and mm -hmm. get it off where i don't want it so yeah uh, the japanese beetles love it too and so I I'm not seeing any of those around. I remember here. you saying it acted as bait and it drew them all in so <laughs> they paid attention to this rather than all your other plantings. I think maybe. Yeah. I, you know, I used to think I needed to spray those beetles, but I, I can't. There's too many. And some years they're horrible, and this year haven't seen any except in your hair. <laughs> I know. They're starting so, to, they're all over at my house right now. That's yeah, why. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, you know, they, they clearly don't, I, I think there's, they're still coming. They hopefully won't be as bad. They do tend to go for the hot line too. Mm, do they? Huh? And make a lot of holes in it. But, you know, that's just part of gardening. Yeah. And they come and they go. They usually leave around August sometimes. So, a months. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad they're only here yeah. sometimes, or yep. going for a short time, relatively. Yeah. <laughs> well, your hot vine is is it at peak bloom now? Would you say or? I, yeah. Still has more to go. No, I think it's uh, 
I think it's doing what it does. Um, this is probably about the time you might harvest if you were going to do something with them. Mm -hmm. um, there might be more time to go. There's some that are really little and some are big, so. Yeah, I'm looking at the ones that are yeah. out from the main body of the plant, and those are quite large. Yes. And then there are some that are just hanging on the tendrils. How do you, how do you, how do you um, harvest them? Do you put a ladder up? Well, yeah, mainly go on the deck side. And yeah, and it's, you know, we just cut them. It takes forever. <laughs> oh, I believe you. Yeah. yeah. I believe uh -huh. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cut Only, them by hand. Snip, yes. snip, snip. I've only done it a couple times. And it's an extremely aggressive plant. And I have to train it. I have, I have to secure string. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would just fall over on itself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But once it gets up to the trellis, I don't have to do a thing. Mm -hmm. And it just does this. Yeah. Um, pretty amazing. And it dies back to the ground every year. I have to remove all that debris. Wow. And then it starts over every year. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with all that debris when you remove it? Do you remove it as mulch or toss it? Or yeah. I compost. Compost? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you've got your rhubarb specimen there. That's, that's a pretty good one. That's nice. It likes it there. Yeah. Well, I, it w probably was twice that big before I took a bunch out. Sure. So. Even, even larger. <laughs> I know, I know. It was crazy big. Yeah. That's the red variety. I think it's called Red Ruby, a Canadian. Okay. It tastes really good. So what is it that makes it taste really good? Is it, is it sweeter? It has a distinctive flavor? I, I think it's say? sweeter. I have one that's the green, mm -hmm. the one that's more common. Sure. And it's good too. It's just not as tart, maybe, or sweet. Yeah. Oh. They're different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it would be, uh, for those of us who like variety, we should try the red ruby too. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Good tip. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put the raised beds in? Yes. More than one. Yes. She, she's got such mine, a cool mine story. Mine are 10 inches tall. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> no, it's hard to... And we used recycled pallets. Yeah. You could probably tell that. Oh, I did not. I couldn't yeah. tell. So we nice. used good wood for the frame so it's sturdy. Yeah. not going to slide down the hill. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, clad it with pallets. So if they rot, no biggie. Get more pallet wood. And you've got styrofoam on the inside, if I'm remembering right. Too, yeah, to yeah. help keep the water inside, keep it sealed. And keep the soil in. in. Keep mm -hmm. the soil in. More to keep the soil in. Sure, so it doesn't mm -hmm. trickle out between the slats. Yeah, yeah. That, that is really clever. How many styrofoam containers do we get and just well, toss out? Well, and it works well. I mean, we use sheets. Mm -hmm. We bought sheets she to cut it. Yeah, okay. the pink stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And, you know, it doesn't degrade, so. It works good for Set this. it and forget it. Yeah, yeah. I suppose you could use other stuff too, but we needed kind of the, the flatness of right. the sheets right. for this project. So, and this is the sunniest spot I have, except the front. So that's where I do the. If it, you know, I only have a couple tomato plants, but it, they produce quite a bit. One pepper plant, and then I have lemon basil and regular. That lavender plant, I've got like three, it keeps coming back. Ah. It survives the winter, which yeah. kind of amazed me. So I planted some lavender and it was clearly the, the state my, as yeah, mine is never that it died back, did not come back. So I'm thrilled. I just yeah. let it live there. Sure. Yeah, it must like, I know they like good drainage. I'm just surprised mm. it's surviving with snow piled up on yeah. it. You know, like it's just harsh. I wonder if it is that good at reseeding itself or if it's somehow the, the plant survives. What do you think? It's the plant. Wow. It's the same plant. Yeah. yeah. And that, what is that little purple flower there in the zinnia, in the um, marigolds? Oh, the, this right here? Yeah. That's the Laurentia. It's just not as big yet, like the front. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it'll push out quite a bit, but stay like that height. Yeah. 
these lilies, I have long hair. I forgot I planted that <laughs> color, and when it opened, I thought, oh, yes, so pretty. Gorgeous. It looks planned because it goes so well with the color of your petunias. <laughs> yes. You know? yeah. Oh, you totally do that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, so if you, I just order these out of catalogs like um, John Sheepers, uh, Van, uh, I can K. Never... Van Bergen. Oh, the, yes. I, that, I know, no, I know that's not the right about. pronunciation. I don't know how to pronounce that word. It, it's a long Dutch word, but yes. it, 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 it yes. has a couple initials and then <laughs> something like Burgundy, but ends with a D N on the end of it. Yeah, they, I recognize it when I see it, but don't, I, don't, I can't say it. Either. Yeah, <laughs> they started. These bulk companies have started to sell. They're called border lilies, mm -hmm. short Asiatics and short Orientals, and that's what these are. Oh. Then these are these are all Orientals, so they're fragrant. Mm -hmm. And they're considered short. They're considered short. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Those they, are short. They actually mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, compared to the ones I have now, I don't know. Yeah. Why yeah. Just six so, feet tall. <laughs> yeah. I don't like them that tall. <laughs> yeah, they get pretty tall, don't they? Yes, they do. Yes, I have I seen that. that plant in catalogs, it's a good and I can't one. pronounce the name of that variety either. I believe it starts with an R. But, but um, well, the 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 it's called, it, Betty Corning is pretty much all you need to know. Okay, all right, that's all I need to know. Yep, Betty Corning, and, and it's, it's an older variety. Okay, and mm. very strong grower, and does not get that. Some of the clematis get brown. Right. I have some of those that do that. Yes. This one never does. Huh. And it blooms for a month, like two, three months. It just keeps. Well, that's great. It's it's a lovely plant. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm used to seeing the clematis flowers that are big and flat, mm -hmm. and these have this nice delicate I love those. bell shape. Yeah. And they look great with your age rate in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And those are an annual, the, the age rate. Yes, right? they are. Yeah. And you've got somebody in a little support in front of your age rate. Oh, that's just snack pepper. A snack pepper plant? They, they grow small. Yeah. And that's all I know about it. I don't know, that's what they call it. Sure. When I ordered it, just snack okay. pepper. <laughs> I have one that they call it lunchbox. Oh, okay. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. And have that eucalyptus scent that you crush underneath, right? I, I, I planted them sideways. I thought I'd see if they could right there on the side. Instead of going really tall. Sure. We'll see. <laughs> when they get so you deliberately planted yeah. them sideways <laughs> in the ground. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, that's one of the things I was wondering about when I was looking at them. Yeah. Okay. I did that. Well, we'll see. It we'll looks see. like this one is uh, going for it. I'm not sure they will, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they might. So, and that's just the bigger tomatoes, the early girl, and the little, uh, the little cherries are really okay. sweet. I mean, they're sure. common. Sure. But that early girl always does so nice. And I only have them. That was the one. That yeah. was the one. I've grown them from time to time. And they are really an early fruiting variety. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. prolific and the fruits are manageable size yes. and they taste good. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Let us go to the back <laughs> if we could. <laughs> yes, yes, please. <laughs> Get the clematis tour. <laughs> Up slope. Up slope. We see more of your lilies. <laughs> and are those these are black eyed Susans that are not blooming yet because they're not getting as much sun as the ones in front, is that right? Well they're that right that um, triloba brown eyed. The brown eyed, okay. That just seeds about. Okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, I wouldn't normally plant something taller on the edge like that, but they'll be so pretty. So mm -hmm. I left them. And mm -hmm. they're they're part shape. Okay. So they they really like it in here. Yeah. 
And these are anemones that are drifting in. I love anemones. And they're, they're aggressive, but they're, you know, when they flower? They're, I, they're, it's like yeah. one of my favorites. They're fun. Something to look forward to in the fall again. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's part of the fun for me is when you see the plant growing nice and vigorous, you just know that there's yeah. a treat waiting mm -hmm. later. <laughs> yeah. Coming yeah. from this big vigorous plant. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had some plants not happy. The phlox is not happy. Oh. Mm -hmm. That yeah. that plant there is usually extremely because of the drought, you mean? Yeah, or? it just ground, and yeah. I've, I've been watering, so that's not why. It's just doesn't didn't like that heat so yeah. soon. You know, um, I wonder if some plants don't like the dry air. Doesn't matter how much you water them, they just don't like the dry air. It, the temperature, the yeah. pounding sun. Yeah. I think. And when there's no humidity in the air too. We were learning that at, last week we, at our at bonsai meeting that. It's all those things, the heat, the lack of rain, and the humidity is no, not there because humidity is also watering them, yeah. too, through, through the their leaves. leaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe that's it. Now we've had a lot of smoke this spring. And some days mm -hmm. people yeah. are being urged not to go outside. And, yeah. and I've been wondering if um, the smoke w would affect plants, or at least some plants, yeah, due to putting a layer of particulates on the leaves, so I've been watching my plants to see if I could blame any failures on the snow. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is so, that a rose? It is. It's one of the few I have. Oh, I love it. it was gorgeous. I got it. Oh, um, yeah. It's Willem Baffin. Oh, yes. And I, I wow. tie it to the deck because it would fall. I used to have one of those. It's, it's, I love it. Yeah, I think it's gorgeous. And I don't have so many issues with the beetles. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's their favorite issue. Yeah. <laughs> this lawn is covered with beautiful little purple violets, so yeah. much so that the scent grows up. Oh, this really? Yeah. Yeah. Violet yeah, we have a lot of violets, amazing. too. And that's something about about yards is how dramatically they change through the seasons. Yeah. Even in two weeks you can have a completely different look to the oh, same yes. yard. And here's a, a case in point. This is and this is all is this different. all shade then, right? Yeah. Pretty much I mean you get a little sun drip like it's, it's right up there maybe. I get some sun in that back okay. area. Yeah. I yeah. dabbled some here yeah. to the left of I have areas that that island. I used to have a huge tree there. Mm -hmm. um, it gets some sun, but yeah, it's yeah. It's this kind of local. It's just beautiful. Um, it's one that I recommend to people for shade trees because of the little leaves. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, yeah, if they break down. It was here first. <laughs> well, and good for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a smoke bush that I've pruned into a tree. Um, I planted it because of the foliage, and it, it gets the little smoky haze when it flowers, which you can kind of see remnant. Yeah. It has some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, yeah. And this would thrive in shade, then? Yeah. It would prefer more sun. It would. Okay. But, but it's happy, mm -hmm. and I like how I've been able to kind of open it up yeah. and grow things under it. Yeah. Yeah. In the sun, it would be more purple. Yeah. It would. It's you know, it's a great plant. Yeah. What is this? It does not look like Virginia creeper growing up in the tree, although it's
been trying to get it to stick to that tree for years, and the squirrels often oh. pull it off. Sure. But it's been there now for a few years, and it's never bloomed because mm. it always gets pulled off. But <laughs> I, I have aspirations of gorgeous white flowers. Oh, that sure. yeah. That would look incredible. I know. Well, you never know. I might try that on one of my trees. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that idea. Plus, it's, we have a lot of squirrels too. Yeah, they, they sort of gravitate toward trees. Go figure, right? <laughs> yeah. well, and I don't, you know, some people have commented maybe I should put netting or, but I, I'm afraid the squirrels will get stuck in it. Yeah, or, yeah, you don't Or want the that. birds. Yeah. So it's just kind of, if it happens, it'll be a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Great idea. <laughs> find that it helps when gardening to try to work with everything that's going on in the landscape yeah. rather than to really try to be paper controlling about it. Mm -hmm. It's easier to work with what you've got. Yeah. And because then the plants will be happy. Yeah. And then that creates low maintenance mm -hmm. in the long run. Not, mm -hmm. not that I don't have maintenance, but if the plants are big and gorgeous and thriving and spreading, yeah. it's a lot easier. Yep. So and more rewarding. Mm -hmm. I don't use any herbicides. Um, mm -hmm. And if a plant's faltering, not doing well, I usually I get rid of it. Makes sense. Or move it. Or move it. Or move yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Find a different home for it. Yeah. Because sometimes just moving it a couple feet oh. can make all the difference in the world. It really can. It really can. Yeah. So this looks like somebody who, uh, yeah. As long as we're on the subject, didn't yeah. make the cut, if I can put it in those terms. <laughs> well, I have, do you know the perennial, biennial bachelor button plant, the little blue flower? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was early spring, and that's that. It's, it's just done. It's done. But I have those all over. Mm -hmm. um, and that one is the one. Uh, so it'll be back next spring. It might be. Yeah. 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 Is it ornamental grass? Uh, that, yeah, it's a, um, it's a sedge. Ah, Carrots. sedges have edges. Yes, they do. Yes. And oh. that's, I love sedges. Mm -hmm. And this, I've experimented here and in the corner. Mm -hmm. Um, I could hardly dig a hole in that corner when, when I did that garden. Mm -hmm. And now it's great. And it's the sedges have refined the soil. And well, something. Yeah. yeah. Um, Matt, I have a question. Um, how do you do your edging? Like, what's um, your technique for that? I spade it by hand with the shovel. Yeah. Or just hand pull. Mm -hmm. But the it's so nice. it looks great. I mean, yeah. that really makes a difference. Everything just looks spectacular. Thank you. Yeah. And I have such good soil. It's not. A, it doesn't take me long to go around with flat edge. And, and mm -hmm. You don't have that nice thick clay layer back here. I do not. <laughs> you don't have that distinctive <laughs> iron red water loop clay. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky. Yeah. yeah. So. Ooh, there's a little variety of pasta. Oh, yeah. Those are so cute. Mouse ears. Mouse ears. Yeah. I like how you put them in a row like that, yeah. like a little hedge. <laughs> cute. This path is new yeah. since last year. Yeah. The grass wouldn't grow, nothing grew. It was just like weeds, worse than the lawn. I mean, I got a lot of weeds. And I always like, I just love rock. Mm -hmm. And it was an excuse to introduce more. Sure, sure. So I had made a dry creek bed and been having fun with it. I love it. What is that rock? It's gorgeous. Do you remember the kind? Oh. I got it at uh, Madison Block and Stone. It's a uh, great place to go. Very rusty variety. Yeah. 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 It's gorgeous. So, um, yeah, these were big, heavy pieces. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. And we, we slightly tipped it so the water would go that way. Yeah. Uh, so that little torque to this on purpose. It is. Kind of goes like that. Because I, I want, I didn't want the water, I wanted the water to go into that rock area and in a big rain. So 
slough off and wander the garden. Mm. This is the kind of planning that goes into a very serious garden landscape. <laughs> this is managing even the water yeah. flow and watershed management on a micro scale. Well, it, it, it helps, you know, it, as we all know, if we don't get the rain, any little bit helps mm -hmm. if you can direct it into the garden. Yep, absolutely. It's, it's a good thing. So I see a blooming of still be back there. That, that didn't get bud blasted. It did not. Looks lovely. I planted some annuals in there, so that's nice. Ah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And we got more lilies here. So but this is nice. And, and that's another kick I get out of how you do what you do is, is there's this. something like that. So. I have not either. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it, and, and, you know, it's, you can find those. Um, I think I bought that one at k &A Greenhouse. Mm -hmm. They, they, I've been trying to grow more dwarf evergreens and, and they get some and also, uh, shout out to Stonewall. Oh, I love Stonewall. Stonewall Nursery. Uh, yes, fabulous. Unusual. Is this a dwarf as well over here? It is, and I think it's a kind of chemiciferous. Okay. Um, but I don't know the rest of it. I could get it to you. Um, it had some winter burn. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to protect it if I want. Um, it's bounced back. Uh, I haven't given up on it. It was a Some of the dwarf conifers, you know, however they breed them, they, they sure. can burn because you know, of the winter cold. So, yeah. So, more hosta. Go over in here into your shady nook. Sure. Well, I have, I like to experiment, and then I have the normal, the, the variegated that you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. But when we bought the house, those were in the front yard. And I just moved them back in. So if you don't mind, I'll go back in here and point while you're talking about sure, it. Sure. So this is the this is the variegated that we see yeah. around town. Everything. Right here. So we're in front. I've noticed that this is a very sun tolerant variety. 
compared to most pastas, but it's there. And they're usually much larger when they're in the sun. I think this is a nice managed. <laughs> they're nicely controlled back here. Who's our friend with the red berries here? That's the native bane berry. Bane berry. Mm -hmm. Bactaea. We got our bluish leaves. Mm -hmm. Here's an early bloomer. Yeah. Um, this is this is a difficult spot even for hostas back here with all the canopy. Yeah. It's it's hard. So I do they look good. Right. Uh, that makes sense. So they get more water. I do. Yeah. yeah. And the trees, frankly, need it too. Yeah, yeah, they do. So it's it's all good. Here we have a lovely with finely divided leaves. Uh, that's Jacob's ladder. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was all kind of a light blue. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah it was pretty this year. Oh, so, I remember. Yeah. yeah, it was very pretty. Eventually, I'll have to cut it back, but um, I just haven't gotten it. So. Uh, this plant is Ligularia. Okay, yeah. that's a lot bigger. <laughs> yes, yeah, we'll wait till you get over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they seed about for me. Ligulari does Demona. Um, so if you don't want them to spread, you deadhead them. But they have a beautiful gold daisy like flower. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to let my trees with, have their lower branches where appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, see what happens. I see a uh, jack in the pulpit with berries back there. Yeah, they they just come in. I like them. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm what a nice volunteer to have. Oh, and there's a may apple back there too. It looks like. Or is that another jack? It's another, it's jack. another jack. I wish I had may apples. I do not have that one. So I have some you can have. <laughs> they keep moving around and they're they're she can fix you up. Yes, oh, I can I fix can't you. Wait to see your up. Garden. Oh, they're pretty much not looking good right now. <laughs> <laughs> so in pride of place we've got your hydrangea here. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was high time I just had a regular white hydrangea in the garden. This one's called Incredible. Oh, sure. I do like it. I like it too. It's lacy. I like the lacy ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's gone through two winters, so I think it's found its home. Yeah. I think so. Gorgeous. Here's just a mix of hostas, epimedium, the same. I love ferns, so those mm -hmm. ones are that. Um, the bean berry is naturalized yeah. in, that, in this pocket. Mm -hmm. Just does its own thing with all the red berries. Um, there's other varieties of bean berry that actually get white berries. Oh, this is, but this is the native one. Those are beautiful. I love the contrast with that chartreuse mm -hmm. pop of color and then the red. And it's gorgeous. Yeah. And the pagoda dogwoods have been seeding. Oh. Okay. And so I leave them if I think it's a good spot. Sure. And so that's what all the these lower trees yeah. are. Most of the pagoda dogwoods actually all of them in the backyard have seeded, really? even oh, the big wow. ones. Wow. Yeah, the one by the house. That, Oh man. I didn't plant that, so. <laughs> they're fast growers then, they are, too. They are, they are. They, you know, and they, they're susceptible to, uh, called, it's called canker. Okay. Um, but, you know, you just prune that out. Yeah. Hmm. So. Enormous. Yeah. Still a ligularia? It is. It is still a ligularia. It is. And yeah, enormous. enormous. I've never seen seen hostas that big. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were bigger. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't have. I think these are called Blue Angel. Wow. If I remember correctly. Okay. Yep. I yeah, and I love them. And I, you know, a lot of hostas, the flowers are eh, but I really like the flowers mm -hmm. on these. Mm -hmm. They're almost like pyramids. Or yeah. Cones coming up. Yeah. They're just. They're so dense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Your mulch here is really deep. As I'm standing, I'm, I'm sinking into it here. <laughs> Do you freshen your mulch up every year? Not every year. And a lot of this is uh, needles from mm -hmm. the pines. Okay. Uh, and I used to have compost bins back there. So, I mean, this soil back here is extremely nice. So. Farther back I go, the bigger the ligularia gets. <laughs> I know. They've, they've taken over. Yeah. Yeah. Remembering last spring, I, did, I just didn't expect to see this. I know. <laughs> it's I know. Great. It looks great. Yeah. yeah. And then when they do their flower, it's fun. The, the textures. But it's the leaves. It's the yeah. leaves. Yeah. All and kinds of textures. And then the back sides of the leaves are pretty nice. Sedges back here. Yeah, yeah, this is taller sedge. I love this one. It's a palm sedge. Okay. I, I'm going to butcher it. This the Agensis or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's a good one. I love the sea. Mm -hmm. More totally. Things just kind of have their way. I was going to ask, did you plant that there or did it just appear? I, I transplanted some You did? From okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a uh, turtle head, drifted turtle head. It blooms later with the flower and like that. Uh, so that September. would be right next to the turtle head? Like yeah. The taller plant? Far, far, far side. This is more of the. Of the brown eyed Susan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah, yeah, it kind of looks like the turtle head, but it's a little. Oh, that yeah, over there. there. Yep. That's oh, oh that. that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And this is a uh, witch hazel. Huh. Oh. So I'm. Excited for that to get a little yes. larger. Understory native tree. Oh, beautiful flowers it has. Oh, yeah. Mm. Gorgeous. Yeah. So you can see all the babies. Are these hearts? It, it is. Wow, those are <laughs> hanging around, aren't they? I know, I know. <laughs> it, they're, they're, it's about had it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a gold heart. What were you saying, the babies of the. Oh, you, you can see my issue with the ligularia. They're everywhere. Right? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, yeah. we'll become that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, weeding is important. Where I come in with a hoe when they're that little. Sure. There's some, yeah. You can do well, that. Well, if I need some ligulera, I'll, you can I'll have. come. I don't know where to go. Yes, you will. <laughs> for runoff off the parking lot and it dumps into the corner of our yard. Oh! At first I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do, right? Because it was a, kind of a mess. Sure. sure. Well, I decided to plant things that would love it. Very smart. So those hostas are just some in substance and that's another blue angel and it's bigger than those <laughs> two over there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it really, yeah, look at the flowers, how tall. Yeah, the sedges, love it, of course. The ferns, yeah. those are Japanese ghost ferns. Oh. They love all that water. I've yeah. never been able to grow them that big anywhere. May no. I walk back here and point while you're... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so Japanese ghost ferns would be... That drift there. These guys, or, or these? These. These here. Yeah, okay. these are the ghost ferns. These are the ghost ferns. Yeah. And They're this gorgeous. is the sum and substance. Yeah. Which is looking very substantive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A and lot. then yeah. what are what are these here? 
Oh, that's Ansonia. Okay. Kudrechtii. Yep. And this is... Sedges. Yep. Sedges. I have a few varieties in here. Um, this is pretty in the spring. Yeah. Lots of early spring little bulbs. Yeah. Right now it's kind of quiet. Yeah. But I like the quiet too. Maidenhair fern. Maidenhair fern. And this is a... That's a leatherwood fern. Leatherwood fern. I have lady fern. Lady fern. And then... Uh, Christmas these. fern. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas fern. <laughs> Christmas fern's behind you. This is Christmas fern then. The one close to the truck. Yeah, that one. This one here. Yeah, it's a great fern. Yes. Yep. Oh, and we have another kind of sedge here with multicolored seed heads. Okay. Like oh, yeah. One. Yeah. Yep, that's the Carex glaucum, I believe. The one that, oh, the variegated one is called Ice Dancer. Ice Dancer. Yeah. And more of these ornamental. More of the gold grass. Yep. Ginger. Just ginger. Any story on that door? Oh, uh, not really. Oh, yeah? I mean, he likes it. <laughs> I just kind of pulled it out of a dumpster yeah. with help. Yep. And then, you know, it sat in the basement for a while. And it's like, what do I do with that? So I had extra paint and tied it to it's the tree. It's a great trellis. Yeah, yeah. 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 Make it part of the. Garden. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good thing for the clematis to climb on. Yeah. 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 And here we have ginger. That's the ginger. That's the native one. Yep. And trilliums in here that are done blooming. Yeah, I do have a nice pocket of trillium. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're picky. I don't know if you guys. I have a few. Trillion. I do in yeah. my front. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have some, and some years they come up, and some years they don't. <laughs> More than that, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. 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 They they're okay there. This grass that this taller kind of lovely. I have in the front. I have back mm -hmm. here. It's a it's a kind of feathery grass. Hmm. Telemagrostis brachytrichum is what it's called, and when it blooms. It's it's just so lovely. So when we come back for the fall shooting, yeah, hopefully it'll be in seed yeah. because it's just so graceful. That's why I kind of let it meander through the gardens. Yeah. Yep. I like that hosta. Do you remember what kind that is? I think it might be. It's just so pretty. The colors. Mm. Pocket of sunshine. Or yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, it is. I, I like it. And it looks like you have some like little irises. Yes. Is that what those are? The okay. iris cristata. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've kind of been taken over by the sedge, and I didn't. You know, they they like their space and aren't getting it. But there they are. <laughs> 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 so. Yeah, um, this is a beautiful hellebore mm -hmm. when it blooms, and I love the foliage. Yes. Now, okay. It's big nelly. It's, it's not common, I, I, and it, it hasn't stuck in my head yet it's because great. I haven't used it much. Yes, anything. it's new. I think I saw that on, a, um, on something, that was, and, it, and it's like a newer thing, isn't it? Or maybe not, but it's, it was know. newer to that person. And the, clearly the bee likes it. Yes. <laughs> so are those the actual flowers right now that yeah. we're looking at? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they're waning. Does it still have enough to interest a bee? Yeah. Yeah. The, the plant on the outside of the fence, the tall guy, mm -hmm. is a really cool prairie plant. Oh. I, I planted it on the inside. Uh, I decided it wanted to be on the outside. Sure. <laughs> um, but it's uh, Indian plantain. Ah, uh, oh, okay. yes. 
Yes, and I, it, I know. it really is pretty when it blooms. It is. It, it can be very aggressive too. <laughs> well, I haven't had too much trouble. That's yet. good. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors are the ones that will have the trouble, right? <laughs> my, my mother planted Indian plantain and was very proud of herself because it was on a, a knob, a knoll that she was completely redoing to native prairie vegetation. And she was cursing the day she ever planted that. Oh, yeah. oh, it wow. just took over. And suddenly it became an invasive species, oh, you know. Oh, so it just wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, it looks like it's, I, it's been there a long time. Well, it doesn't good. look like it's taken over. No. Yeah, maybe it's... maybe I have a different variety. I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Oh, it, it looks... Does it look like when I first saw it, I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's behaving itself here, and that, that's it, what matters. Well, and the neighbor mows, so, uh, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. that's why. That, I'm sure that yeah. has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. But it is a very pretty plant. Yeah. Really yeah. And that's a stand of Solidago goldenrod called fireworks. Mm -hmm. So, again, in the fall, sure. it's kind of draping yeah. yellow flowers. I have those. You do? Yeah. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, I like them. I do, too. So... Heirloom iris from my husband's grandmother. Oh. It's just the, the periwinkle clear. Oh, beautiful. Bluish color. It's fun to have. Do you divide your irises or, or dig them up at all or do you just let them be? I only do things like that if the plant's not doing well. Like, I don't divide hostas unless. Well, they're too big for the space, right. yeah. Or they're faltering for some. I love yeah. them big. Mm -hmm. I don't. They're not. It's not hindering growth. No, mm -hmm. they're. Yeah. Yeah, and so the iris. Um, I've. Had, it's a nice stand. It's. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any bore issues or sure. what have you. So the answer is no. I don't. I, I have Siberian iris. So. Mm -hmm. I need to dig them up and just replant them and. And divide them, but also put, I think even those like to be planted up a little higher, don't they? Siberian? Um. Because I don't get very many blooms. Okay. And I thought maybe that was why. That could be why. I get a few blooms, but not not as much as I should. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But they're not as picky about about being a little more surface, like I iris are. Or I, are they? Or have you not found that? I haven't found they're terribly picky. Hmm. Okay. I mean, they like the water. Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe dividing those would help. Yeah. I'm gonna like try it. it. I've had I've had some stands for other people that they've stopped blooming because they're older stands. Yeah. So I think there's something to it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, learned that irises like to have their their rhizomes right up at the surface, like mm -hmm. they like to have bare feet and mm -hmm. and I don't see bare feet. Yeah. Here. And That's what we're fine. Just talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't seem to care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I kind of ignore them. Hmm. You know, I mulch around them if I mulch. Yeah. Just kind of let them be. Yeah. Make sure I deadhead them. Yeah. Hmm. So. And how old is this planting? Uh, at least a decade. Huh? Been there a while. I think that's wonderful that they came from your husband's grandmother. Mm. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, because then you can think about, you know, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, I think we've made the... I think we have <laughs> made the rounds. Absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, want to thank you for having us all over today and Glad looking you could forward to future episodes where we <laughs> tour each other's gardens. Yes. And thank you for joining us today at WLOOCATV's Waterloo Garden Series. If you or someone you know really, really loves gardening and would like to share your love in your garden with the community, please contact us at WLOOCATV at gmail.com. We do have next year's episodes to plan, so <laughs> here's your chance to step right up. Thank you very much.